you're watching Fairfield Public Access. I'm Susan Kessel and I'm here today on a really hot day with Connie Boyer, our, my co-host for Opening Fairfield Doors. Our guest is John Shermer and uh, we're going to pass up saying our mission statement today. How's that? Okay, that sounds good. I was going to say that about two years ago right now was the first time that we did a show together and it was a Christmas show. We were uptown talking about the uh, Christmas decorations and uh, it was after that that we decided let's do a show together. Do you remember that? I guess I do. It's funny that I didn't realize it had been that long that we did I that Christmas so. show together. Yeah, and so... How fitting, because we're going to talk about Christmas today. Right, and here we are on a really hot day <laughs> uh, to talk about... I titled this show, Here Comes Santa Claus, so uh, we should talk about that. So we're going to talk a lot about John and what he's been doing artistically, but we're also going to talk about a special project that's coming up uh, for Fairfield and uh, hoping that people will get interested in it and help contribute to this great project. So anyway, we're at John's house, I guess, in his backyard, and you can see a few of his uh, things around us, his tools and some of the things that he's been making. And um, so why don't we just start, John, let's, let's go back a ways into your life and tell us where you grew up and, and uh, when you first realized you want to be an artist or what you did in school or... Uh, well, I was born in Saginaw, Michigan, the hometown of Stevie Wonder, and uh, and I uh, I just had rudimentary talent at you know just I could draw a little bit in high school, but I did I did want to get into commercial art, and uh, so I started taking art in college, and uh, uh, but I was sort of. Uh, engrossed it was the great society LBJ wanted social workers so I thought well I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to social work so I I graduated with a degree in sociology and uh, got out of college and went immediately into art and uh, forgot forgot the whole social work thing <laughs> but <laughs> then I uh, but I I started carving wooden signs and uh, in Michigan and in northern Michigan, Traverse City area, beautiful area. Oh, there Whoops. went Santa. There goes. <laughs> we'll talk about that one later. <laughs> okay, one of the props. Anyway, uh, and I, I have sort of different meanings when I want to carve a sign. I, I really was interested. In, I could carve wood uh, technically from the very start. I could always I could carve wood. Uh, so ever since I, I started when I was 20 years old, but I wasn't able to compose pictures or sculpt uh, profoundly. Uh, it, but just the technique uh, of eye-hand coordination, I just had it. And, uh, and then I, I started carving wooden signs and I started doing things just for the sake of developing my ability to sculpt and to draw. If I, a sign that had uh, seagulls in a sailboat. It, it found it a challenge to to draw it and to try to sculpt it correctly. And so I I was sort of getting paid to learn how to sculpt. And uh, and so then I uh, well I just kind of had many different jobs. I ended up uh, carving furniture for Baker Furniture down in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And Baker Furniture is a uh, very fine furniture, and they, they uh, so they recruited me to, to uh, car for them, and uh, it was a wonderful experience learning how to to uh, come up to their level of expertise. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the meantime, I was sculpting and painting and drawing and just trying to develop as an artist. So you've worked in all the different means, so to speak. It hasn't been just focused yes, in one area. Yes, yes. I love painting. I love to oil paint. And right now I make a living uh, creating woodblock prints. And I, I carve a block, print from the block, and uh, sell them at art fairs around the Midwest. And the Art Association did have his show last year, so some people might be familiar with some of his work. Um, the woodblock prints. And what does that mean exactly? It's it's flat except that 
the picture is raised. Is that correct? No. No. It, what it See? is is okay. Is. Now I'm going to show. I'm, <laughs> today I've, we've already decided that I'm going to completely show my ignorance about being an artist. I keep asking him what all these things were. I didn't even know what this was, so you will soon find this out. This is not <laughs> a po potato masher. Okay. <laughs> oh. This is a mallet. But, oh shoot! So anyway. But anyway, a block is a, a woodcuts are. It's a printing technique. It's like an etching. You you etch the plate and then you print from the plate. And uh, so it's, uh, I carve the wood block, which is flat, and then I print from the block. And uh, so, and then I hand color it. And so you so print from the block, what yeah. does that mean? You lift it over and put it in ink and go like this? Yeah, I, I put ink on the block, and it's like a stamp. Okay. Just like, just that, just like that. I put ink on the, a little different technique, but it's, uh, it's like stamping out a, your picture on a, on a piece of paper. Then I sell the paper 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So when did you come to Fairfield? I came here uh, about uh, 14 years ago. Okay. And uh, That's about the time I think I met you at uh, some art fairs yeah, and things. Yeah, I remember. And you were also doing some jewelry. Yes, I... I uh, oh, now I'm interested in that. Yeah. Well, I still have some. We'll, we'll talk later. <laughs> oh, and, and I can't let Bob watch this show then. You got really, really well known for some of this. You were doing some for Disney World? I used to sell to Disney, uh, Disneyland out Disneyland. in California. Disneyland? Oh, really? And um, I used to, uh, Orvis Catalog and many uh, big department stores in New York and uh, boutique stores around the country. And um, yeah, I, I would make it out of ceramic. Actually, the funny thing is, I would carve, let's say for example, a cat, I would carve it in wood, in, real thin, and I would carve it all out in wood, and then I would make a mold out of it uh, with uh, ceramic, or with uh, porcelain, and then I would pour liquid ceramic in it, and that would, and the, and, uh, that would be the piece. And uh, then I would hand color the, the Very the ceramic delicate piece. details so, being painted. So is that pins or? Pins or and earrings, mostly pins. pins and, yeah. oh, okay. I was specialized in pins. So you don't do that anymore? No, I don't. No. no. And you did lithopanes? I did litho, uh, litho, lithopanes. I always say that wrong. Okay, so what is that exactly? Uh, lithopanes are, uh, uh, again, it's a, I utilized a carving technique where I carve a thin sheet of wax and I carve, uh, the more I carve away, the more light comes through. And uh, I create a picture uh, from, uh, by uh, judging light and dark. I just create a picture. And you've probably seen them, like little night lights you plug in and they're the little, uh, the light comes through where it's thinner. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so that, that was a wonderful business that allowed me to uh, get into, actually get into prints, it, uh, it uh, well, lithophanes are porcelain. Porcelain is translucent, so that uh, when I made a mold and poured liquid porcelain into the mold uh, and fired it, the porcelain piece became ex exactly the same as the original uh, art. And, uh, we have a little competition with some trucks. So <laughs> I didn't know this many trucks went by here. <laughs> yes. So anyway, it uh, it was a wonderful uh, little uh, you know money maker to, to allow me to uh, get into block printmaking because uh, uh, I just used it as a as a, uh, a way to just kind of uh, have have a way to make a living. So would you say that the wood is your favorite? Maybe your favorite medium? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just the thing that comes most natural to me. I now always. I think you did the wood signs for like uh, Midwestern ice cream in the. Uh, in their no, store. actually, I wish I did, but I. No, didn't. you didn't. <laughs> no. How come I always thought that? Well, I probably led you on. <laughs> <laughs> well, these things down here are kind of similar. Yeah, those actually those were sculpted in uh, clay. And everybody okay. thinks they look like wood. I, yeah. Even if I use clay, I still have it look like wood. But right. those are clay. And, uh, and this is called Phantom of the Alley. You can see that it's slip cast. In other words, I, I sculpted the original clay, which looked exactly like this. And then I covered it with 
plaster, and then I took the original out, and then the, in the plaster mold, I poured liquid uh, uh, ceramic, and uh, and the moisture was sucked away into the uh, uh, into the mold, leaving mm -hmm. just a thin mm -hmm. film. It's pretty thick, actually, but <clears throat> so. And then I was uh, selling these uh, in, in galleries, and uh, but a uh, little, little too big for me, a little too clumsy, not enough uh, uh, money is, for the work yeah, and so put forth. Up here so they can see Hard them. to market, and I know that you do a lot of uh, shows, fairs, right, uh, travel yeah. around to Chicago, and well, I guess that's one thing that I question I have is particularly for. The, the younger people that are coming out, let's say they want to be an artist, and of course, you know, you've always heard, heard of this uh, saying, the starving artist syndrome and all that kind of thing, so. It's you hard. Know, what are the tricks for artists? I mean, Susan, you know. Well, it's hard, but you just go after and do what you have to do. Yeah, um, you know, <clears throat> you develop. First of all, you try to get good at what you're doing, and then uh, and then you there's just uh, either you sell it or, or you give it to somebody else and they sell it. It's either go through a gallery or else you sell it yourself. And these shows that I do uh, are a wonderful way to, uh, you know, to sell your work. And uh, You also play kind of a game of trying to figure out what people want. And sometimes you hit it on the head and other times you can't so figure it out. So it's experimenting maybe with different And being aware types of, of what's uh, going on too what people are into styles and trends and especially with things like jewelry and night lights that's more of a gift thing whereas uh, these prints that I'm doing are are more of uh, more art you know, yeah they follow you as a as a career they follow you have although a the gourmet art type thing you're doing wine and uh, some food type pictures people are really into eating and wine and they like to have those kinds of things around them too. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I mean, uh, hold it. <laughs> <coughs> I think uh, back from what... Do uh, we need to uh, worry? Santa's falling apart. Yeah, I, <coughs> pardon We'll me. take a short camera break. So I guess things like this happen when we're outside on the spot, no editing. <laughs> you get to see it all. <laughs> Now, in addition to your art, um, the visual art, the wood carving and everything, you're also a musician. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Many talents here. Well, Matisse uh, used to play the violin and angst or engrace, if you read it the way uh, Americans do. And uh, I don't, there seems to be some connection. I haven't done a study on it, but I, there seems to be a connection between art and music. Uh -huh. Maybe the right side of the brain thing. I'm not sure, but I I, I do is. enjoy playing the guitar. Yeah. Okay. Is that the only instrument you play, or do you play other instruments? Uh, that's it. And do you write songs? And I've written a couple songs. And sings. Yeah, I try to sing. And uh, just had a gig at the Square with uh, Myron Gook and Steve Lamb and Jim Steinbeck and Full House is the band. We Billy play. Uh, they had a great night for it. It was a good night. It was very good. Well, Had a great time. So you are uh, almost, I can't say Fairfield native, but you've been here a long time. I've been here a while, Called yes. It your home. Yes, yes. You know, I uh, wanted to come here and bring my daughter here to raise her in a nice small town. And she's now in college. And, and uh, so we. Uh, and you're still here. Still here and enjoying it. That's gonna stay. Great. Well, we're glad that you are here. Thank you. And back to, uh, did you have anything? Well, I was gonna say maybe we should we learn should about these about, tools. Okay. We think the uh, wood carver's tools. Well, Richard, you want to show the tree? And then I'll show, I'll show you what I what I have in well, mind. Well, I think we should <laughs> describe this project first. Okay. okay. Um. The chamber has a committee called the uh, Holiday Lighting Committee. It used to be called the Christmas Committee, but now it encompasses more holiday, so it's called Holiday Lighting. And we meet throughout the year and try and organize the displays in Central Park for the holiday season. And it's been over a year ago we thought of this idea of having 
a locally made, and we actually do have one. We have our angel, uh, which is on the downtown square. It's a, a handmade, original design piece. And we're contemplating and have hired John to do um, a second piece. And we needed a tree. <laughs> so that's where we go from here, is the tree I was driving along a year ago by Howard Park, by the courthouse, and they were cutting a huge tree down. Now, I'm assuming this is the same tree. Mm -hmm. um, and I t contact the city and John, and, and we saved the tree, and it was moved to Chautauqua Park, by the Park and Rec. And then we, we got more organized this year. We had it moved to John's yard, and so we're sitting here in his yard with this tree. And what kind of tree is it? You it's know, an oak tree. An oak tree. Yeah. And is oak harder or easier to carve than than a lot of wood? <laughs> uh oh. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Uh -oh. I'm sure. It's basswood a... would be, or lindenwood. Basswood is uh, is easier, but uh, oak is very hard to carve. I can imagine uh, when you have oak furniture and you look at it, um, the tightness of the grain. Yeah, it's, it's pretty... So we have this his historical Fairfield tree, really, uh, growing there. I'm not sure how old it would have been. Yeah, it was, well, it was, it was huge. Yeah, it was very big and, uh, and now very old. And now we got it cut down to about what size? It's about uh, seven or eight feet, seven feet, I'd say. And he's going to do a Santa that we think will be by our Santa house in the square. And you do have experience doing this because you've done it many years in Traverse City. No, I've never done it before. Not this big. <laughs> just, oh <laughs> just want to put some tension into. No, I, I have, I do a project in Traverse City, Michigan. Every year I carve a sculpture, uh, and I'm, I started about, uh, well, 15 years ago, and I have uh, nine sculptures that that are a part of a, a Swiss village scene. It's going to be, it's on permanent display in a, in a store in Traverse City. Big uh, candle uh, merchant uh, and a beautiful store. And so they're on permanent display and so I, uh, I, I, I get to do that uh, for about five days every year. It's a beautiful and, you're, and you're using big tree stumps like this for that project, well, they're, or they're smaller? They're, they're half size, so they're about uh, three feet tall. So is this the biggest piece that you've done? Yes. Yes, it is. That is great. And so, we get the... <laughs> How long do you think this is going to take to do this? Oh, gee, you know, I'm so lousy at estimating time because I, I look at something and I think, well, I can get in. But then I get into this oak wood and it's just going to be forever. But it, 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 a lot of time it depends, uh, times it depends on detail. Um, but I think it'll probably take me uh, three weeks to carve it beginning to end, I think. And today is um, September 18, 2000. So we're starting here at the beginning and we're gonna do uh, show it again later as it progresses. Um, I did bring a design that you gave me when I proposed this to the chamber. And uh, this is it. And you have large drawings of it behind us that yeah, the, the drawings that I, I just drew those this morning. And uh, I measured the tree, and uh, the tree is 20 inches wide, and that, that determines how high I can go. I can't, you don't want a big long, so you want it, want it to look right. So I, just by using that dimension, I figured out how tall the Santa is going to be. It'll be five feet tall. And uh, yeah, we can't have a skinny Santa. No. 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 We did <laughs> talk at our meeting last week that the bag might have to disappear. The bag's got to go. <laughs> not enough the wood. Not fat enough. <laughs> and um, so we're talking about maybe a squirrel or some little animal. Yeah, some some animal. Back maybe a couple here. animals uh, yeah. here and there. And I love the bird and the colors. And I thought I, uh, as soon as I get through uh, carving it, I'm going to uh, stain it and color it. Uh, 
in such a way that the grain of the wood still comes through and it'll have color on it. And so will there be maintenance that has to be done from time to time? Uh, it depends on, on how, how long it's in the sun. If it's not in the sun, it'll last, uh, you know, for a long, long, long time. But if it's in the sun, then it, uh, it, it'll uh, need uh, re-varnishing once a year. Probably. We'll be Just calling depends. you. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. We'll be calling you. We do want to thank the city for its involvement already it, of getting the tree here for us and working with us in doing that. We do appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah, this and is, it will this get is smaller. A, this is a big project. How, how heavy is this? Do we have any idea? I don't know. It's real heavy. Now, you said uh, you built this base. Yeah. And somehow maneuvered it onto the base and it's sitting here. Yeah. And it will have a really sturdy base when it's downtown also so that we don't have to worry about um, it falling or tipping over if children want to touch it. Um, we are concerned about that so we're taking care of that. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the process? What do you yeah. do first? What are you going to do first? Uh, well, I, I just measure from my cartoon. Just, I just made this. <laughs> this is his measuring stick. This, this is called an artist measuring stick. This is, uh, these, John um, Shermer style. So I, I just kind of, uh, well, this is how big my head is. Oh, okay. So I, I go to the cartoon. I don't know whether you can see it very well, but th this is called a cartoon. When you draw a picture out of what you're going to sculpt, you draw a front view and a side view and you line everything up so that they're all the same at the same point in terms of the bottom of the ground. It's all measuring. And then, uh, so I'll measure the width of Santa's head and then I know where to put it on the tree. So- Well, is it gonna, is it gonna be exactly that size that's on, on your sheet there then? Yeah, relatively, yeah. yeah. Now, when we were at the meeting the other day, we were talking about the wood and sometimes it does things that you don't expect. Um, I'm sure, you know, when you've seen things, the wood grain, it might go a different direction and it could alter something, right? Well, yeah. Probably it, not a it lot. It might check. That's uh, wood, woodworkers' terminology for splitting. The wood could split. Uh, I'm actually thinking about wood wants to go in, it wants to implode, and so when it starts going in, it'll it'll break it's at the weakest point and that's that's the check or the crack so I was thinking about uh, carving a, a line in the back of the of the sand so, it would possibly... so that when it does go it'll go there oh, that's it'll a good shrink idea. there you can it'll, control I want to save the face um, well direct that, it that a little? will direct it a little bit I'm thinking okay. about doing that now on this small one over here is that a check let me, there is, yeah. let me pull yeah. him out here oh, hopefully I won't fall out of the this chair is, this is hard to be. This so. is glued up for me by Doug Adams. Beautiful job, and uh, but wood checks, and so you can see where it, uh, there's some uh, checking here and there. But that's the nature of the of, of wood. Of, of wood, and so right. we don't really worry about it. And it's not attractive to fill it or anything. It's just. Oh. But I, I would almost think oak would be less likely to do that versus another wood. Is, would that not be true? Or? It's, a ma it's, it's not, uh, the wood is so much as, as it's the degree to which it's dry. Okay. This has been down for a year and that helps. And the moisture will evaporate through the ends of the wood. And uh, So it's a good thing we started this last year and it had was it very good. put away Everything and let worked it dry. Out very well. <laughs> right. So I think that, uh, I think we'll be in good shape. But uh, then as I go, as I'm carving it, I'll dose it with linseed oil and just try to keep it moist. And then uh, ideally what you want to do, a lot of carvers will wax the ends of the wood and let the moisture, let it evaporate through the uh, middle of the wood, which is slower, it really comes out quickly through the ends. And that way it'll be a, a slow dry and an even, and it'll, it, it's less likely to check. So there are these things to, to think about, uh, but uh, it should be fairly uh, dry, uh, and uh, 
So I, but a few checks, we you know we don't worry about it. If it's, if it's I think it just gives there. a little character. Right. Now, will you be carving it right here? Yeah, right here, yeah. So people could drive by and check out what's happening yeah. with Santa? Yeah. We do anticipate during, um, I think it's November, there's a open house downtown uh, for the holiday season, and we hope that we can somehow get it uptown, and he will be doing some work on location uptown. Um, if everything works out, just like <laughs> we, <Maybe. laughs> we try. <laughs> So you'll get a chance to see him uh, working up there. And we hope that we have it done by this Christmas. Well, that's I the think, plan. I think we will. Okay. So again, will you tell us the process of, you know, the 10 steps or whatever, What's, how yeah. you get the bark off? I mean, and you know, well, how do you start I'm going to, uh, really creating by this using, shape? By using my cartoons, I'm going to, I'll, I'll know what are the large shapes to take off. And I'm going to use a chainsaw to get rid of the big stuff. And then I just go right to the tools. This is lignum vitae wood, hardest wood in the world. And uh, Harder than oak, huh? Yes. Thank much. goodness. <laughs> now, yeah. What did you call that again? Lignum vitae. Lignum uh, vitae? Is yeah, it? it's an exotic wood that is... Uh, From a lignum tree? The, yeah, lignum vitae tree. <laughs> and where are those grown? Uh, New Guinea. Okay. So <laughs> I can believe anything. <laughs> I thought I was gonna say Missouri. No, this is uh, from not in America, and uh, but I just bang away. And the la you can see the last project that I had. It. Uh, Do you replace these very often? No. 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 I've had this one. I had. I've had for twenty uh, five years. So where do you buy one of these? Uh, you have to buy uh, carving tools through a catalog. Pack some lumber up in Des Moines has some carving tools. So do you start with big tools and get smaller? Yeah. Just go, uh, you know, to the, this is my biggest tool. I'll use that a lot. It has more and, of a curve. Uh, yeah, just to kind of... Maybe for texture? Yeah, that's, that's going to be nice for uh, the fur, just kind of a... Maybe a beard or something? Beard, yes. I, uh, that was one of the things that drew me to carving. I just love the scallop marks on it. Which shows up carvings. in your work and your printmaking. So like yes. on this piece, it would be a real small one of those? Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, so and this each, is for like smaller? Yeah, smaller you know, measurements ears. and things. <laughs> Fingers, I, squirrels. I had a job with a, a, an obstetrician. He said I, he wanted me to carve a pregnant woman from a painting. and. Uh, and so I said, well, just give me lots of time. And so I, I, I sculpted it was Nine months. Nine, give me nine <laughs> months. So I sculpted this, this piece. And uh, I, I just looked at it, looked at it, and there was something wrong. And uh, I realized then that the sculpture was, was five heads tall. And a human body is seven heads tall. In was she words, short, like me? She was short, <laughs> but you're well proportioned. You're as far as, you know, there, there are measurements this is, to the body. And this is where I learned, ah, sculpture, you don't just, you know, there's this thing with Michelangelo seeing the sculpture in the piece and just kind of freeing it. Well, he, his vision was, might have been that powerful that he, but basically what you do is you, ha you, you have to measure. I, that's where I learned, ah, I've got to measure. And so I did another one. This time I measured seven heads and everything came out proportion. So um, I think that's true in that's drawing or whatever. You do need to measure and look and, and make sure you're doing it correctly, not just guessing. That's how they did the, uh, the monument in, uh, in North Dakota. Um, they, well, I don't they, know. I don't think we should be telling that secret because now it sounds too scientific. You think there's going to be some? It is scientific. Yeah. Well, I know, but I thought it was just some, you know, visionary, creative genius. Well, it, it is. <laughs> it must have been that too. I've never seen it, but uh, no. It, but it comes from. So what were uh, you saying about uh, Mount Rushmore? Well, you know, somebody got over there with a, a transit and measured from here to here, from, from a stable point, uh -huh. and measured the distance between there and here, uh -huh. and uh, on, a, on, a, on a small model, and just blew it up. Well, we know to take away this much, and mm -hmm. you know, so it's all a matter of, uh, 
measuring and from a sta some point that's stable. And uh, so it's it's tricky, but but it's also arty. So yeah, right. You've got to love it. <laughs> well, I guess it, you know it does make sense. Okay. But uh, you get and then your ability to see does improve. It, uh, the more, of course, the more you carve. Uh, uh, I measure, measure, measure. Then I throw it all away. I look back. Well, first of all, you carve away your your uh, uh, any guidelines. They're gone. If you, so ultimately, you have to use your your ability to see three dimensional. And do you ever go, oh, I just knocked off way too much? <laughs> and then it changes. <laughs> I've done a little bit. Uh, yeah, that I, that can happen. Mm. That can happen, but it won't happen this time. <laughs> <laughs> Not with this tool here, which is for what? That is a tool that gives me a flat surface. So if I uh, so a big broad uh, yeah, if, area. Yeah. See uh, if it was this will gee I've got a fly that loves me. Yes. <laughs> Flies, <laughs> bees. We are really dealing with the elements out here. <laughs> but yeah, so this uh, okay. this is a, I love this tool. It's a beautiful tool. This is a, a nice tool that I just got uh, last year. It's a V. I'm, I'm looking at it, it needs sharpening, but uh, so this this is a V tool that'll uh, beard or hair, different textures. And you haven't used this one? Doesn't look I good. used this oh. a lot last year. I had a job carving uh, the Tree of Life on a on a 11 foot by 9 foot wall out of cherry wood. Where Beautiful. was this? This in here in town. It's the uh, Susan Gore house. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful house, and uh, uh, it was a fabulous job. So I, I was using a small tool, it was just taking forever. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to get Speed a better. Speed up here. I've got to get a better tool. So I got it, and it's a beautiful tool. I love using it. Wow. And and so what is this thing? It has pencils attached to it. This is, is that like a circular yeah, that, type. Yeah, that's my homemade uh, uh, circumference drawer. I think it would work. <laughs> okay, and uh, and this again is the same same, same principle. It's a measuring device that okay. uh, I just uh, it's two eyes on the. Uh, on the car on the cartoon like that, and then I measure the same distance mm -hmm. on the wood, and so then I know what I'm getting. Uh, and, uh, so we really should have that little guy that we showed you, <laughs> that will show up in our town square around Christmas time, an original carved, hand carved by a local artist, which I think is going to be wonderful for our Fearfield Square and um, wouldn't it be nice if we had a lot of things like this in our square and people would just really want to come and see it. Well I think if we could share that's part of our vision I think even the, the Art Association you know we they I know you guys have talked about it too within that group is, is to get away from some of the tinny yes. tinselly purchased items the wear out so quickly and, to, and, and look so tacky. And um, to use the uh, all the artists that we have here in town and start creating some pieces that will last a lifetime. And, um, and be meaningful. Right. I mean, here we've got a tree that grew uh, by the courthouse in Howard Park. I'm not sure how old it is. It would be interesting to find someone that could tell us um, how old it is. Well, if you want to get up there and count the count rings, Count the rings? Susan. Is that how you do that? I can <laughs> stand on that chair. We'll hold you. <laughs> Maybe you can do that while you're up there. Do you use a ladder? Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. I'd get, I'll, to get different perspective, I'll just be all over the and place. And what about when the weather changes? I'll you, put on a coat. You work out here. You're like the mailman. Sleet, rain, snow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, when, when you start banging on that, it's uh, I'll, I'll be grateful Messy for cool weather. Hard work. But yeah, it's going to be. So this piece looks like it's been around a while. That is my sharpening strop. This is a piece of leather. Say nail file. A little piece of driftwood, and this is uh, some uh, abrasive paste that's on there. And this, you can see the paste. This will uh, once you once you take your your carving tool to a very fine level with a very uh, fine stone, then the, the following step is to use the strop 
you saw the barber stropping his mm -hmm. razor. That, that produces a very fine edge. This, this takes uh, any little indentation, just wipes it out. Just makes it absolutely razor sharp. Oh, really? Sharper than a razor, really. Mm. And, so these uh, tools last forever, basically. Yeah. As long as you have duct tape. Right. Yeah. That's, I've gone through handles. Yeah, handles. I have too on paintbrushes. They're yeah. always falling yeah. off. But Duct the, tape is a vital piece of equipment yes, for it is. Ma maintaining life. Always, always need duct tape. But these are uh, Swiss tools and some are German tools. Beautiful steel. Yeah. Do Americans not make these or what? No. No, they don't. Really? Mm -mm. Seriously? Uh, actually, they probably do someplace, but... <laughs> I was going to say, the good so, stuff. So the good there's, stuff there's sounds thing. like there's a market for some creative American person. It would be fine person. if somebody would like to create some tools here in Fairfield, Iowa. I'd, I'd be appreciative of the, of the thing. Okay, Fairfield, there you go. Entrepreneurs, call John. See what the shapes is, are they need. <laughs> So. That's amazing. I mean, I, I find that really kind of incredible that the best tools you're having to, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, Germany, well, Germany has a long tradition. All the carvers Oops. came from Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, a lot of people came over from Germany and uh, they, they, were, they worked on the churches over there. They'd work forever. And uh, in Norway and... Uh, so you'll find a lot of, if you go to a, I've heard legends that people going to a garage sale and finding carving tools, their grandfather was, uh, you know, a Dutch carver that came over and carved circus wagons in New York City for oh, really? such and such brothers. And, uh, and they're selling them and I, I hear these things and I just, I've never, I keep looking Are but I've never found them. Is there a need for carvers as much as there used to be? Are things too much well, plastic or, you know, things like that? Yeah, it's, uh, that's, uh, you know, unfortunately uh, there isn't. Um, car carvers used to work on churches, and then they, uh, in America they worked on uh, circus wagons, and, uh, and, and now they, they work on signs, and uh, other than that it's... Furniture? Uh, Some. Furniture furniture a little bit and so but it's not it's not like it was but it and there's a lot of carvers around especially in Iowa and it's probably used to be more of a tradition a family that was passed down and now it's you know, if you I, I have the talent so. and you, the desire so. uh, yeah yeah you go after it yeah there's uh, wood carving clubs in in, uh, in Iowa all lots of carvers up in uh, Minneapolis carvers are everywhere and, uh, is there anything local where people can belong, or, or and is is there anything local where people can learn to do this? Can they learn wood carving through Indian Hills, and they need to go? S no, unfortunately, there's no place. No. So it's either like you're self-taught, or you kind of have a mentor, like you know yourself. Or you or seek it out the places that offer it. Seek it out, yeah. When I was in Saginaw, Michigan, there was a little German community that that was uh, right near my ho home. And uh, this man was uh, brought over from Germany, Oberammergau, Ober Ober uh, Germany, and, which is like a wood carving capital of Europe. And he studied carving wood there. And they brought this German community brought him over, and I, I hung around his studio. I was a 20-year-old man, boy, and I uh, hung around. I was just watched him, uh, I bothered him, I was just all And I'm over. sure you learned an awfully lot from him. I did, I did. And uh, and I even joined in a couple of his classes just to, I don't know why, I didn't take the whole series, but I, I went to two of his classes. But I, I watched him, which tools did he use, I talked to him. Uh, I just let him dry with uh, my questions. questions and, and my, I was very, very intent on learning. Uh, about it because I just loved it. I just wanted to learn how to do it. And uh, so... Well, I think it's great that you're able to make a living doing something that you love and that you want to do and you're so good at it. Thank you. I, I enjoy it. I really do. And you travel around and um, 
you're producing some wonderful things. Thank you. Let's show this little piece, this Santa. He's really cute. Now, is he made out of wood? No, no? I uh, carved the original and I made a mold and that is cast in hydrostone. I used to sell those. Uh, hydrostone? Yeah, it's like What's a that? plaster. But it's harder. I mean, this, How is, is this thing is heavy yeah. for this, from a uh, resin. Resin is a uh, is a plastic product. Okay. This is a, a mineral product, uh, basically. Uh, 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 well, he's very cute. That? And What's then the hand painted. Hand painted. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's somewhat of an addition. It could be an addition, a limited edition, numbered, signed, type in that. It's not an original, but he made the original right. and produced the mold. And um, that sh I think that'll lead right in here to what we need to talk about next. Yes. <laughs> um, a lot of people know Bill Greenlee, also goes by Billy Whittle, um, who lives in Ottumwa, who is a wood carver, a whittler more, um, does smaller pieces. And he always comes to the Holiday Art Fair and sells mostly ornaments and has done some Indians and um, some Christmas and non-Christmas pieces. I think and he does trolls, because I think I trolls, bought one last year. Probably. And um, when we were trying to think of a way to fund this project, we thought, what a great tie-in if we would contact this artist, Bill Greenlee in Ottumwa, to produce some of these that are matching our big one. Even though it doesn't have the bag, it turns out that it might not have the bag anyway. <laughs> it's a beautiful piece. Beautiful so piece. Bill did the original carving and uh, his wife paints them individually. He, he carved the original and then he made a mold and they are cast resin, uh, but they're exactly like the hand carved one. It's dated. Uh, 2000 and he also has his initials here and on the bottom he has signed every single one and like I said his wife painted them. We do have them, they come with a little uh, screw eye hook thing at the top for either um, a wire hanger or a ribbon or cord um, whatever you want or you can take them out which I think I might do and just have it set rather than using it as an ornament. So we're going to market these um, for funds for our larger piece. Where? They're going to be at the <laughs> chamber to start with, and then maybe some other places around town, and definitely at the Holiday Art Fair, unless they're gone. Because we only have 100 of them. They're only 100. That's about all Bill wanted to whip out this year. And we have them all right now at the chamber. Yes, Is that we correct? Do. So they are for sale right now at the chamber. And they will sell for $12, which is really a bargain for a real collectible piece that's going to represent uh, our piece in the square. Same time, same year, and uh, same design. So we're happy to offer those, and if you're interested, you can contact the chamber. These make great gifts, um, teacher gifts, out-of-town gifts, um, special children gifts, uh, something to have as a memento, the year 2000. Um, something else that we do offer at the chamber that we did last year and I'll let you show this, Connie. Yeah, we wanted to talk a little bit. I mean, mostly the show is about John, but since yes. we were talking about Christmas too, we did, you know. That's fine. We're, we we're have promoting to promote a little bit more too. So that we can. Um, <laughs> so we don't mean to horn in on your. No, no. Your show. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I guess we are. <laughs> so these are the aprons that were designed last year, actually by Susan. A gourmet, a la Fairfield aprons. And these were printed at Fairfield um, line. line. Features uh, the Fairfield Square uh, with the William Coop and the gourmet on a plate, represents a plate, and a little picnic in the square. And these make great gifts. My daughter went to France this spring and we were trying to think of something that she could take the family and we immediately thought of one of these aprons and she took it oh, and she idea. said they loved it. They loved to cook and the, the man put it on right away and wore it every night. So these are great gifts, 
hostess gifts. Uh, and these are also on sale at the chamber. And they are, is it 15? I believe it is. 15. And, and they come in several colors, so you can check those colors right, out. Right, all different colors. Orange for teachers and different holidays. And also on the top of that, we did leave room across the top that if you are a business or a restaurant or something and you wanted to put your own name across the top, there's room for that. There you go. And we do have some mugs left, right? Mugs, Fairfield mugs. And we also want to talk about a new little project we're doing. Yes. We are um, not going to do the um, Citywide yeah. canvas. City canvas, door to door canvas. Uh, last year it just became really difficult to find volunteers. You know, everyone is really busy, particularly on the weekends on Saturday or Sunday, you know, and with going their family. Door to door is not any fun. So we decided we we're going to try something new. And, uh, you know, the door to door canvas really has been a tradition for many, many years. But we're going to break the tradition year at, this year and see if we can't start a new tradition. And that new tradition is called Trees of Lights. And what that means is that we will have, there are different colored lights and they all have a different price. For example, <clears throat> should I just say the sure. each color? Sure. Let's start from the top. If you want a whole string of lights, it's $100. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you want to buy a gold light, it's $50. <clears throat> Excuse me. Green lights are $25. Blue lights are 20, red are 10, and clear or white lights are $5. And so what that means is we will be coming out with an ad in the paper and you can mail in whatever donation that you would like and uh, have it in, in, in honor of someone that you know or uh, in memory of someone that you know and then as we get closer to Christmas and all the donations are in then we will have a printed page in the newspaper that shows that John Shermer gave $100 for a string of lights and it's in memory of or in honor of, you know, his parents or whoever he wants it to be. And this is something that we'll do each year, start again, so it's a one-time, one-year thing. But it's, it's a way to recognize you're, if you're giving uh, a donation anyway. It's nice to, like maybe for me, I might do it for my, my daughter and her husband for a special gift. and. Um, and we will have some cards that will be available at the chamber to pick up that says um, your name, ha a gift has been given in your name uh, for the tree trees of lights and then it says from who and then you can send it in the mail or give it to them or whatever and uh, it's just a nice way to remember people. So we're really hoping that uh, you know the town will come through on this new tradition and make it a positive experience and uh, show your support. And there, there probably will be a few cans around town, around the square for, you know, small change donations at the restaurants, at the banks, those kinds of things um, where people can, you know, give smaller donations because, I mean, that's what we need. Every penny counts in this, in this campaign for this particular uh, project because and keep the lights it does, going. It costs a tremendous amount for the, uh, just the light bulbs every year and any refurbishing, um, putting them up, taking them down, the electrical, electricity, um, it all adds up and it is a cost every year. And let alone new projects such as this, you know, we've been saving for several years for a new project and uh, we have to say we have to thank John because he's helping us out he's by doing it, very it and affordable. he's making it affordable for us to be able to complete this project. And, um, you know, we're just really excited to have another original piece in the square by another Fairfield artist um, besides our angel, which Elaine Watson did, or Elaine Arnold. Arnold. And um, so it's just really exciting to have another piece. And so we hope that you really come out and support us. And uh, gee whiz, if you want another piece in your home, just call John. He's are right. you in the phone book. I assume you are. I'm in the book. He's in the book. <laughs> so uh, he can create whatever beautiful piece that you have in mind, I'm sure. And uh, so when are you going to start this, John? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks you're going to rev up this chainsaw yeah, and, and go for it? the chainsaw will be uh, uh, revved and uh, away we go. And I would like to invite you back uh, sort of midway if Check you'd up like. on you and see what's going on. I, I, I plan on uh, taking a picture every day 
with I've just got a little digital camera and I'm going to put it on my I'm coming up with a web page so I'm going to put it on a oh, web page so I'll have a little photographic uh, 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 study of, of the day by day progress and uh, I, I would tell everybody my, tell everybody my web page address but I don't know it yet so uh, we'll put it on FPAC um, we'll, also when we put a picture of yeah, this as yeah, it changes we, yeah but anyway uh, thank you for uh, for having me uh, do the job, I'm, when I when my sister comes here to visit for Christmas, I, I'm very proud of taking her downtown to see the square. It's a gorgeous feeling and time of the year, and uh, the square looks beautiful. And I'm just proud to be a part of uh, uh, adding a piece of art to the to the uh, which I what I hope will be a growing tradition of art down downtown because it's. It's a source of pride for, for me and I know for everybody. That's a great project. And we're just really looking forward to see it develop. Yes, I'm excited. Um, I've thought about this for several years and I'm glad it's finally happening and hope that it will continue. And the funds from the Santa, from the lights, helps pay for this and other projects, keeping it going. And we do appreciate that. Contact the chamber. Uh, 472-2111, I believe, um, if you have any questions. And John, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John, Hi. for sharing you. all your knowledge and your expertise in these fields. Thank and you very much. We wish you continued success in being an artist and making a living at being an thank artist. You. And I think it's a wonderful thing. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks.